Hello, Linwood. Uh, Jim Nelson. I'm the chief of police here uh, for the city of Linwood, and uh, very happy to bring this video to you. Uh, you will see that this video is a, is a conglomeration of uh, a lot of presentations we've done over the past few years, um, and uh, including several public uh, council presentations. But we want to have a place that you could come and see uh, a video in one place um, that uh, that cover the project kind of from beginning to where we're at today from more of a technical design perspective. Uh, happy to be here with uh, our project manager for McKinsey, Brett Hansen, who I'll let you introduce himself now. Hi, uh, pleasure to, to be joining uh, you on this virtual open house. And uh, in shape, uh, thanks for the initial introduction. Brett Hansen, I'm project manager. I'm associate principal with McKinsey, an architect. And uh, alongside uh, the chief, I will be taking you through uh, some design um, uh, progression of the project. So by way of background, and you may have seen this in some of our other presentations, but uh, we have significant space challenges here at the police department court and jail. And uh, this project is meant to meet those uh, challenges. Um, as I uh, if you look at our previous videos, you'll see a lot of discussion about uh, jail uh, and the lack of infrastructure. Um, and then uh, that combined with how our employees work together and the different work groups and how we can more efficiently use space and for flow and, uh, and to make the work environment uh, more efficient is, is a, a huge driver of this project. And this project also does incorporate an emergency operations center, um, which is a, a multi-use uh, area, which will combine with a community room, um, but it's built within an infrastructure uh, of, a, of a, a police department that's built to a standard, um, you know, to withstand natural disasters so we can have an emergency operation that, that uh, can function in time of, a, of an emergency. For us, uh, when we looked at, you know, cost is obviously a huge driver of any project like this. How do we most efficiently and effectively use our resources? So we looked at using the existing building uh, uh, to repurpose it, and then looked at our existing site, which is just under three acres. Uh, we'll cover the site later in this presentation, um, but, the, but uh, clearly there's advantages to using a site that we already own, and then a site that we can tie into an existing building. Uh, some other major considerations for this project is we are located within the city center. Um, so the uh, city of Linwood has a, a city center uh, project, which includes specific design guidelines. A key feature for the city center is the transit center, which is uh, where light rail will be coming in. So Linwood uh, Police Department sits on the north boundary of that city center, subject to the design guidelines. Additionally, we are we are we do a butt residential, and so the uh, height restriction of 35 feet is also a, a significant component of looking at the design for this property. So our design group uh, analyzed all that space needs um, and analyzed uh, the restrictions of the site um, and the three acres, the topography, and determined that yes, the project was feasible, but we really have to carefully map out every square foot of the project site, and that's just what we've accomplished. So important piece of this project was uh, examining the, the project budget and, and funding. So uh, the, the total project cost, the total budget is $64 million. Uh, $60 million is uh, for future bond that will be uh, in front of council uh, early next year, uh, non-voted uh, debt, and then $4 million of existing criminal justice sales tax. This is money that's already been uh, collected um, it's existing money that we've been using for this project already as design is a piece of that overall budget as a soft cost. And that is what's been funding uh, the design process. It was very important for us to be cognizant of uh, the taxpayers. And so we uh, looked very, you know, could we do this project without increasing taxes? The answer is, is yes. This has no new taxes involved in the project funding. It was also important not to reduce services or reduce other city programs, or other parts of the budget, which we have been able to do through this funding uh, strategy. Uh, looking at the current economy and the impacts of COVID and what it's done to uh, the budget, um, you know, we had to look at how that affects the project. Uh, the, I guess a silver lining of the current economy and the current impacts to the economy are historically low interest rates which will uh, definitely benefit this project and benefit our ability to uh, complete the project in budget. Uh, we also anticipate um, and already seeing a competitive construction market for major projects. 
And so we expect that to continue as this project heads to, to bid uh, uh, in the, uh, near the end of the first quarter of 2021. Uh, in the current 2021-22 budget, which we've just completed at the city level, um, that on the police department includes uh, short-term budgetary savings uh, in that budget because of this project. For instance, as the jail will be uh, not operating uh, as it currently is, as it will be uh, uh, under construction, um, we have several staffing vacancies that will be uh, unfilled as we uh, move this project forward. Um, there's also uh, long-term budgetary savings in the area of contract jail expenses. So while we're at reallocating expenses from contract jail revenue, which is money we pay to other facilities to house inmates, um, uh, those costs increase uh, re relatively regularly. Almost every budget cycle, we see a significant increase from uh, the places we contract with. And uh, being able to bring those services back to the city. So uh, that while the inmates will be in the city, not only will we reduce costs and be able to reallocate those expenses over, you know, which will increase over time, um, but we'll also be able to serve those inmates within our community and uh, with services within our community, which is, uh, which will, should significantly impact um, the overall positive provision of services and reducing recidivism. Please see uh, some of the other videos, which uh, cover that topic more in depth. I've kind of started to touch on it, but debt repayment is, is in layman's term, it's a mortgage payment. It's how do we pay uh, the, the debt service on that $60 million bond. The big piece that I've started to touch on is the reallocation of existing jail contract housing expenses. These are monies we already spend in our budget, um, but instead of spending them elsewhere, we're gonna turn that money and spend it on the facility. Um, obviously at the end of the day, when the facility is paid off 30 years down the road, um, then that money, there'll be significant budgetary savings uh, to, the, to that contract housing and that, and that uh, debt service payment. We also will be able to uh, reallocate lease expenses for an evidence facility. We currently lease a facility in the city to house evidence, the big facility. Um, be able to bring evidence back uh, into this new construction, this new facility, um, allows us to reallocate those lease expenses to debt service. And also there's other budgetary impacts, um, which is efficiency improvements and not transporting evidence across the city and not having to have redundant evidence storage. It'll all be one location. As I mentioned, we'll be using existing criminal justice sales tax to fund the project. We'll also be using it to fund debt service um, or debt repayment. Uh, these are existing monies that come in and we'll be dedicating a portion of those criminal justice sales tax to the, to the project budget uh, debt service payment. And lastly, we'll be, we currently house some inmates for other facilities that we're typically at or near capacity. So those are, are limited opportunities um, for other agencies to contract with us. Uh, this new facility uh, has increased uh, capacity, which allows us to use contract housing to help pay for the debt repayment. And secondarily, um, allows our uh, local agencies, um, especially our South County agencies, have geographic proximity to a facility um, and also be able to avail their inmates of the same resources that we're uh, programming into this facility uh, to, to try to reduce recidivism. Um, the, oftentimes the, uh, somebody who may be uh, uh, charged with a crime in another city, um, you know, they're also some of the criminal activity they're involved with impacts our community as well. Um, as, as you know, crime doesn't really know jurisdictional boundaries, um, be able to provide those uh, inmate services and hopefully and ultimately reducing their uh, their contact with the criminal justice system and thus improving the overall uh, uh, crime rate in our society or the overall impact of criminal activity in our society um, uh, will affect our community and their community. So we see multiple benefits, not just uh, strictly a revenue generation. Um, now I'd like to turn over this uh, portion of the presentation to uh, our project manager, uh, uh, Brett Hansen. The project itself um, had, as the chief indicated, has gone through a number of studies um, um, in advance. Um, much of that information we were able to utilize to, to begin the project. But really, the, the, the bulk of the project, the heavy lifting, began in September of last year. Uh, that, uh, that initial component of the project was the pre-design. Uh, pre-design in any project is, is uh, essential. It's probably the, it's 
invariably the most uh, critical component of any project. As the chief indicated, when it comes to the site considerations, is identifying, understanding, mapping out all the parts and pieces, the particulars, the challenges, the constraints, uh, all the parameters that, uh, that the design team really needs to understand in order to execute that. Um, the overall redesign included uh, going through and, and analyzing and investigating the existing building uh, for mechanical electrical plumbing, security, structural capacity, uh, accessibility, and so forth, and understanding what, what type of things are going to need to occur uh, going forward for the project uh, for the tenant improvement reports. Um, we also looked very heavily at the existing site uh, for new construction as well as site improvements and documented that information for geotechnical, hazardous materials, and otherwise uh, to help guide design decisions that occurred later. Um, and then lastly, a, a major component of, of the pre-design surrounded uh, questionnaires, staff surveys, um, communication, interaction, collaboration over, over how the department, how the court, how the jail uh, envisioned uh, uh, working, not only today, but also into the future to help support uh, their interactions, their operational requirements, but really their overall mission on, on how their levels of service can serve the community. Uh, and yourselves, and those those are huge aspects of any uh, any project. So the pre-design element um, really takes it takes some time. So that actually took us up through March of 2020, uh, really at the onset of COVID. Right when we're really in a, a great position, we're going to start the design aspects of the project and get engaged with the, the overall team and, and, and begin those conceptual designs, taking all that information and really starting to to visualize what this project actually looks like. Um, from there, we really took, we took the project from schematic design through it from April through September, uh, and then completing the conceptual design on that, of the, all the parts and pieces of that underlining concept, uh, we executed the design development of the project, which we just completed uh, this month, uh, which is setting the stage for us uh, to move into construction documents that will uh, begin this month and take us through March of next year. Construction documents will be documenting, crafting, and specifying all the parts and pieces that not only the, the, the building officials will need for permitting, but also the contractor will need for construction. Um, once we begin construction, which we're targeted to, to begin as early as June of next year, which is exciting, um, it's going to take the course of two, two phases. Initial phase will be for new construction. That will be for the new jail and police department, garage and site work, followed by the tenant improvement work. Um, once the, the police department and jail can move out of the existing building into the new building. Uh, the overall construction uh, of the new building uh, and the operations of the police department will be uh, completed September, uh, November of next, uh, of 2022. And the overall project um, at completion will be at the beginning of 2023. So the chief pointed out, uh, really mapping out the site was a critical component. Um, the existing site and, and really the fantastic opportunity the city has for developing uh, a city-owned site in the, the city center area uh, for a use that already exists is a, is a rare opportunity uh, for any municipality. And so that's, that is a, that's a very key piece to, to really positioning the city to, to have success going forward. Um, when we looked at the, the existing site, the, the adjacent sites uh, to the east, uh, the available parcel there really allowed the city to, and to have the, the capacity to actually uh, deliver on this site for all the parts and pieces that the overall project requires uh, to support the, the, the needs of the department uh, and the courts, uh, not only today, but also into the future for the building as well as the parking. Um, so that uh, all those aspects came into tow as well as understanding the relation of the residential areas uh, to the north, as well as the CHC the health center uh, to the east, a critical partner um, to, uh, to the city and the department. And looking at those particulars, um, what are type of considerations that the overall design team takes into account uh, when developing a project like this and, and even communicating with our clients? Um, for this particular project, these are four key areas that were really important uh, to, to understanding uh, at the early onset. Um, the graphics off to the side and below um, are demonstrations of some of the studies that, were, that occurred. It's really focused on the phasing of the project, understanding 
uh, levels of service uh, during and after uh, the project is complete. Um, understanding access, not only for uh, vehicular access onto the site, but also understanding you know, how do pedestrians come in? How do you orient yourself on the site? How do you, you, how do you improve and, and ensure the success of wayfinding for the public? Um, looking at nodes and, and opportunities for public space or interactions, um, and then connectivity, not only from a public perspective, but because of these facilities have a public, private, and very secure aspect to them, understanding how the public interacts and, and connects with the buildings um, and their parts and pieces, but also internally, uh, these projects and, and, and their fit, fit and flow are heavily driven by the operational necessities of each of the individual groups, whether that be court or jail or the police department, and how those interactions within the, within the building themselves uh, support, uh, support their, their workflow. Building off of, uh, of us gathering information to help support and guide the design team uh, moving forward, um, we've got two key areas. This initial area is looking at the contextual uh, aspects of, of other buildings. Um, what other successful projects has the city uh, seen over the course of its history that currently exist and represent um, perhaps design attributes or characteristics that uh, we as a design team can pull from? And so these are demonstrations, just a few that, uh, that we, we had uh, as conversation pieces. Uh, they were utilized to really uh, uh, promote dialogue uh, with the city and planning group as far as what what types of aspects uh, are already represented that we can draw on uh, in advancement of the design. In addition, as the chief pointed out, we talked about the city center design uh, uh, requirements. Um, the city that we're right on the edge, so this project in itself is is a fantastic uh, opportunity to have a new public project that really can demonstrate. Uh, and illustrate the city center guidelines. So to that end, we work closely with planning uh, to, uh, to understand and apply the city center guidelines, which for the most part, these images really were drivers with regards to him, human scale, uh, the creation of place, uh, in, um, infusing aspects such as uh, seating and benches and, and planners, as well as artwork into those, uh, those publicly uh, connected areas. Um, touched areas, uh, engaged areas, uh, to, to promote uh, those types of interactions, really support the project um, in, that, in that capacity. Adding an ad additional layer to the design advancement, of course, as indicated in the pre-design, we, we, we invest a tremendous amount of time understanding the programmatic needs of the different elements uh, on their fit and flow, their size, their right sizing, as well as building and growth. And so this is, a this is an illustration of the program summary for the project. Uh, in the red, as you can see, that's, uh, that's really, especially on the level two, that's the existing building. Um, that, that represents uh, the amount of space that the court will actually be able to expand into. Uh, and it will be afforded uh, by the police and jail uh, relocating a uh, majority of their services out of the existing building into the new facility. Um, you have the blue representing the, the new police facility components and then the jail and, and the purple there uh, representing the, uh, the growth for the jail uh, that we'll talk about in a moment. Um, one key area, our key aspect uh, to this project uh, really surrounds the parking. Uh, the existing uh, property really only has five public parking stalls uh, for, for all the public uses as well as the court. Uh, the, the design and the, and the design uh, attributes that were considered by the design team in communication collaboration with the city focused heavily on providing more public parking, uh, clear wayfinding, a sense of place uh, that the community can engage in and understand. So today, the, the design actually increases from five stalls up to 39 stalls um, on site uh, and clearly uh, dedicated for public parking. And then for secure parking, which is dedicated to the so police court and the jail staff, um, those have increased to 128 uh, parking stalls that are located in, in the eastern parking garage. The next three slides are going to be representative of high-level bubble diagrams that look at uh, adjacencies surrounding uh, core functions, departments, um, or areas within the building uh, that, uh, that are, are important and essential to efficient and organized operations uh, for the court, the jail, and, um, and the police department. 
So one of the couple of just touching on a, a few of the key things that were very critical uh, from a, a goal perspective and, um, and, and execution on the, the, the core design really what had to really surrounded security. Um, security was a key aspect. It's not, it, while it exists um, currently in the existing facility, uh, the city was really aimed uh, at, at enhancing that. So uh, number A representing uh, in, enhanced security, having screening within the facility um, as you enter into the building. Um, then once you're in the building, you, you can truly uh, um, circumvent the, the core building and, and access those services, which were a key, key component of it. Um, in addition was the, was the peer growth, which I touched on, uh, the capacity to, for the police department to, to relocate in the new facility and really offer up additional space for the court services to expand uh, and, and provide those levels of services in a greater capacity to the community. And as part of that, this, uh, the new design also uh, provides a second courtroom. And so number D there represented of uh, an additional courtroom and in jury space uh, that also doubles as after hours uh, meeting space for the public. Um, and that, that, ther that second courtroom also serves as a therapeutic courtroom. So it's, it's intended to be a multi-function, multi-purpose space that can really allow the court uh, to serve the community and offer up additional services with regards to therapeutic court, uh, which is really aimed and aligned with the overall mission from the, the police department in the city uh, to provide additional services and organizations that can additionally reduce recidivism um, through the system. So with this, I'll turn it over to the chief. Thank you, Brett. So we're going to cover a few jail adjacency diagrams similar to the court. We went through a process of looking at, you know, how the flow should be through the building uh, led by the design team and their input um, and looking at uh, other facilities and looking at um, our experience and, and what our needs were within uh, the uh, jail. So uh, on the right, you'll see uh, a number of different considerations that were used in looking at uh, the flow of work and the and uh, and where we needed to add uh, for the jail. Significantly noted is uh, a, uh, medical. Uh, if you've seen previous videos, you know our current medical in our existing facility is a converted closet into a medical office. This is a medical suite so that we can offer services uh, to the inmates. There's inmate programming areas, both located uh, in the new construction, which is, re is represented on this slide, um, as well as off to the left, you'll see the, the purple represents the existing building in our tie into the existing building. And there is additional programming areas over there. Uh, obviously significantly more uh, op options for housing, expanded housing capacity and options, which leads to expanding classification options. Um, and by classification, it's ensuring that uh, we are housing people appropriately, both from a safety and security for the inmates themselves and also for um, the staff. And, there, and those options um, exist and, and we can use those as even part of inmate programming. And so this is uh, similar to the jail. This is uh, the adjacency diagram for the police department. You'll see on the left of the screen, there are the different levels. Uh, and on the right, uh, a key. Um, as we stack the building both horizontally and vertically, uh, the design team really did an outstanding job of, of examining uh, the different uh, considerations for workflow. So how work flows, and then also uh, security and, uh, and access. Um, there are a lot of uh, particular access considerations for a police department as far as uh, uh, accessing different different parts of the building. Um, you will see uh, over in number C, I'm sorry, over in letter C, you'll see a significant uh, increase to our community health and safety section. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we enjoy an outstanding contribution of volunteer work uh, at the police department, and this provides them a space to both work as well as interact with the members of the community health and safety section, uh, interact with our crime prevention uh, specialists who um, help manage their work and, and, uh, and meet their needs. Um, and uh, as well as you uh, on the bottom floor level one, you'll see the uh, uh, community slash EOC room. So a joint workspace um, where the, we can use engage for community meetings, for internal training, um, external use, uh, not related to the police department, but that's that 
community need for, for meeting space after hours typically. And, uh, and then when needed an EOC or an emergency operations center um, for uh, uh, significant events in the city. Turn it back over to Brett to cover the overall site layout. Thank you, Chief. And as uh, the Chief walked you through, or we walked through the adjacency diagrams, uh, really the importance of building these projects from an operational perspective, understanding their adjacencies are key drivers in that. And as you can tell from just kind of leading in this, the, the different layers of information that, that that process takes on, the evolution of that information, and then and then invariably. Um, once you, you've completed that, you're in a position to begin forming the project. So this represents some of the key attributes that, uh, that took form uh, over the project that were in response to uh, conversations, collaborations, and the information gathered. So this is represented with three, three-dimensional um, shot of the overall site. As you can tell, we talked about the dedicated parking, uh, the, key, the key, key and dedicated entry for court. Uh, denoted from A, uh, but it was equally important to provide uh, also uh, dedicated entry and uh, definition for the police department. So, uh, so they each have their own own identity, but it is a campus. It's a community justice center, and so that the use of other design uh, solutions to help support and um, uh, infuse the two together were very very important. And so uh, between those, we've uh, we've developed and. Uh, designed an uh, integral public uh, uh, plaza space that begins to connect those two, uh, really to make a, make an, a, an element or an aspect of the overall project that that can start to provide uh, connectivity between the court and the police department. It's going to maintain uh, what is currently existing, uh, but on a broader scale, it supports the the overall um, uh, support, uh, size of the project. Um, what you can also tell from this, which was an important aspect and, and was in response, not only to the city center design guidelines, but also the residences, um, we've actually, uh, we've designed the overall massing of the building uh, to be at 194th Street. So it's at the, the street frontage. Uh, most often, uh, secure facilities such as this want to be off the street, you want to have some more buffering. Um, we're actually able to achieve that based on some of the design guidelines from the city center, um, but, but equally important. Is to provide the, the highest and tallest portion of the mass um, at the street, whereas the, it starts to step down as it moves uh, to the north, which allows a, a shorter um, uh, component of the building that's abutting or adjacent and nearest the residential zone. Um, and then the secure parking actually goes one, below, one grade below, which provides an operational aspect to the jail, but it also allows us to reduce cost um, without going, uh, increasing above grade uh, garage, uh, but also keeps the overall scale of the project um, lower on that side of the, of, the, of the site as well. Represented here, as you can see, the you know, looking at the relationship of the new construction, um, not only from a characteristic standpoint, but also from a material selection perspective and how that can, can relate and, uh, and be copacetic with the existing building on site. Um, it's new construction, and so uh, but we still want to be um, cognitive of the overall uh, community justice center as, as a whole. And so a, a tremendous amount of effort and consideration went into that. And then, as you can tell, for the connectivity, the, the, the public plaza space, that is an integral uh, component of, uh, of allowing that circulation to, uh, to occur between the existing building and the police department. As touched on in the overall site uh, graphic, uh, the aspect of creating uh, form and function uh, and activation along the street is very important from the city center guideline. And so the, uh, the use of, of um, trees and planters, as well as benches and other, other human scale uh, attributes uh, were, are very key to the success of that. And so that played a, a key component in, in what that uh, overall um, took shape. And a different view of uh, along 194th, uh, giving you a, a, an element uh, that's really kind of touching in on, on those other contextual aspects uh, that I, I spoke to earlier uh, with regards to ex other existing facilities that, that are, uh, have been successful within the city of Linwood, um, as far as the overhangs and even down to the material selections with the wood, 
uh, warmer tones uh, of the overall project. And then, uh, and then a portion of the project that is, is currently underway uh, with, uh, with the Arts Commission is continuing to examine and identify locations that public art can exist on that. So that'll be an uh, exciting contributor uh, to the overall project. And then lastly, as I've kind of touched on in, in closing, is uh, again, the, the synergy of the existing building with the new, the new building was very important. Um, also, you know, tying those in and creating um, a consistency between the entryways. Uh, it's important that the, between the municipal court, the police department, um, being distinct uh, services in and of themselves, um, need to have their own identity. Um, on the other hand, we also want to be consistent across the board from a design perspective with their, their entryways. And so applying the same level of attention and care to the entry, the new entryway and secure entryway for the court. Uh, building an existing building is just as important as uh, the design and discussion that we occurred uh, with regards to the new entryway on the new for the police department uh, public lobby uh, on the new construction. And so these are representative of, of what those those uh, look like um, on the overall site from the public parking perspective, as well as how you would come and enter into these facilities. Thank you, Brett, for uh, wrapping up. Uh, the slideshow and the presentation. Um, if you need more information, please don't hesitate to visit our web page or our project page. It's uh, on our, our website. There's a link. Um, there's opportunities to, to ask questions or send information there. There's also be surveys posted from time to time. Currently, there is an art survey um, that is up for information we're going to uh, provide to the Art Commission as they work on the public art piece of this project. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure to participate in, uh, in this virtual open house and to share uh, the content of uh, many hours that uh, put together through a uh, tremendous amount of collaboration between uh, the, the city, the users, and, uh, and the design team uh, to advance the project to, to our current state.